for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast. And over 40 years of playing PlayStation and 12 plus years in that game is me combined. I'd like to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, you can. Come and check out our socials. Facebook, Insta- Facebook Instagram, Discord, X said that way out of whack all of those links can be found in the description below though if you want to join the conversation as it happens head over to twitch.tv slash the pop cultures where you watch us record this show live where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show if you want to support the show you can tell your friends tell your family about this position pod if you're listening to us on podcast services be sure to give us a five star rating and a written review if you watch us on youtube be sure to like subscribe or comment below i endeavor to answer every single comment uh, and if you want to support us financially, you can go to patreon.com slash popcultures, as well as our merchandise store, podcast.com slash shop. We can buy shirts, other sort of shit with our logos on it. Max, I'm fucked. I am fucking dead. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm all right, actually. Oh, well. <laughs> I was dead at the start of the week. Yeah. Perked up by the, perked up by the weekend. Oh, well, it's good to know. So, like, I, I'm very much in the different space. So, like, I'm sure I've talked about it on here before, but my son for, I don't know, last couple of years, easy. Um, we, we watch a lot of those like found footage ghost videos, right? And they were never really something that bothered him. But we were watching one yesterday and it had like some rippers in it. Like normally you're like, well, that's fake as shit. Oh, that's a really cool edit. Like, oh, there's just enough for that to be cool. There were two that were just dead set fucking horrifying. I'm like, damn. And then he saw them and he was like, damn. Like, oh no. <laughs> so we had there was a bit of the dodging of the explanation of what he saw and blah, blah, blah. Um, but he did have a bit of a rough night because of it. Wake up a couple of times, being a little bit scared. So my sleep pattern got disrupted. Um, so I'm a little bit rooted. Uh, but it was fun. It was a good way to sort of talk to him and try to like help him, you know, get through the scaredness. Sort of, you know, letting him know that like, dude, like, you know that, because he's like, whenever I see, when I close my eyes, or I see see a ghost, I'm like, well, that's your imagination, dude. Do you know you know that you control your imagination, right? So we just played a bunch of little games and thought experiments that were like, well, let's let's game to tweak it and like you know replace it with something, because he's very similar to myself in a lot of ways. If I if I'm up, upset or disrupted. You just help help me push through it and like divert me, but like like not in a replacement way, but like hey, look over here, but you know. And we can all we can get it done. So that did kind of work. We got to bed and then we went to go back to sleep. And he slept through the rest of the night, which is fantastic. But that didn't change the uh, uh, the handful of, um, you know, disruptions that I had. So uh, I'm a little bit uh, brain foggy and dumb. And like more than usual. And to ensure that I get to sleep tonight, I did not have my, my Ritalin. So you're not going to get that chaos energy. So it's probably going to be a little near. Yeah. But I'll, I'll do my best to, to push through. Look, for, spoil, for spoilers for the for the upcoming show, it's going to be short and sweet this week. Like, there's really not much to... So, not having Ritalin and... Uh, being, not, being naked. Not, 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 not having to stay, like, too on task here. Yeah. Should be fine. I'm glad you, like, you didn't bury the lead, you know, like, near four minutes in. You're just like, you know what? This show's probably going to be a bit average. Thanks for your time, everyone. Yeah, yeah it, look, it's it's... It, it's a quiet one this week. Mm. Like, it really is. It's, it is, as you title the show, it is a fucking slump for mm. Summer Games first. I'm like, I mean, we we got some good news this week. We did? We, we're PAX boys again. We week. are! That's absolutely true. I totally forgot about that. But yes, that is that is true. Uh, both Max and I will be attending PAX Australia uh, once again as media. This is my ninth year 
as going to PAX. I've been, I've gone every year since 2015. So obviously there were those online years. Um, however, I still was engaged in in panels and projects, like working with. I did a, ment- a video games mental health panel. We did um, PAX Radio with Audio Technica. So like you know, we never re- like, at least for me myself, I never really stepped away. So it's been nine years consistently, and I'm I was very happy to be returning um, again this year. But Max, I love your accidental segue because this is the fun part. So you may, if you follow me on social medias, you may have seen that I have been uh, promoting this panel idea that I have. So this, the idea came a couple years ago and I pitched it as a panel then, but I, I, I didn't sell it right. I wasn't really confident with it. It didn't kind of come to fruition. And obviously then COVID happened. So change of plans, panels weren't really a thing. Uh, and then last year I didn't bother because I thought the idea wasn't going to work. Um, after a previous attempt. However, uh, at a random uh, 2K hangout when I was in Perth for Elimination Chamber for WWE, I was having a chat with someone I would now call friend. Uh, that is Doom Cutie. You may have seen her on social media. She runs the Geek Gamer Girl podcast. She's great. She's fantastic. So she's a big Xbox fan. She's an ambassador. She's decked out. Her, like her set looks like this, but Xbox for those watching the video. Um, so we were chatting. And I said, oh, you know, oh, because she walked up and she saw my tattoo and she's like, you know, we probably can't talk. I'm like, ah, that's true. You are an Xbox person. So obviously I knew who she was. Um, and then I was like, well, funny you mentioned I got this idea. And the idea that I have was a panel very similar to that of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival Great Debate, but for games. So the idea being uh, the console clash, uh, you know, it's it's console wars, it's PlayStation versus Xbox, which is standard, right? Everyone's done that. We've been on the internet for how long, Max? How long have you been seeing people fight about this? Pops. Oh, you know, since the dawn of time. Yeah, it's like, 20, like two, uh, 24 years minimum of just since, PlayStation since versus Xbox. Still relevant. Yeah, but then you go back to, you know, uh, like the 80s and the 90s and it's Nintendo versus Sega. And I'm sure back then it was like, you know, The Rock versus the other Rock. Um, and well, so you see, you solved that problem. By um, fucking off, yeah. <laughs> you solved that problem by basically buying Sega. Yeah, and look, it's, it's not far off in the, in, the, in the same way that, you know, Microsoft and PlayStation in a similar space. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so that's, that's fun and exciting. Um, but I have added some fun to it. So... Rather, so the idea would be that we would get some of the best PlayStation creators that in the in the country, the best Xbox creators or media or whomever for Xbox, or the, you know, bring them together and have them face it off. But the big twist being to demonstrate the console wars are fucking stupid. Have them flip teams. Yeah, Freaky Friday, Friday. Freaky Friday, that stuff, right? One will be Jamie Lee Curtis. One team can be Lindsay Lohan. I'll let you pick one, which one they want to be. That's up to them. Because I don't know who's looking worse for wear these days. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea. I made I mentioned this to Doom and she was like, that's that's fun. I like that. I'm like, oh shit, no way. And then I didn't hear from her for like a month or whatever. She said, oh, we'll reach out and we'll sort something. I'm like, yeah, no worries, no worries. Didn't hear anything. A month after she goes, been pondering on that idea. Bam. And then that's when the conversation started. We, start spe- we started like just getting the ball rolling and it's all coming together like her team is set she has uh well we guess team playstation for her they're all xbox creators i am two out of three of my team um so we can lock down that i'm just trying to find the third i want the third to be someone that complements the other two individuals that i have um and offering sort of a different perspective um but uh it should be interesting because i'm you know one of them um you know is like one of the greatest PlayStation brains in the country, where the other is a certified Xbox hater, uh, and uh, they're more more than keen to uh, turn it around and try to defend them. And that's well, they're not at all, and that's what makes it fun. So that's the plan. Um, it'll be hosted by myself and Doom. Uh, if if it all gets approved and selected, then we'll then we'll send more details out of dates and times uh, when it comes around. But Max, you were like, what the fuck are an eye on it? I'm like, well, I can't put all can my I, friends on I, it. Can I just sit on stage with my Switch and be like, I win? <laughs> no, that's the, that's the PC crowd. They're like, well, I win because PC. Like, well, technically, yes, but we're not funny about that. But what the idea, and the, hopefully if this goes well, is because 
the great debate as a principle we can move it so next year we can get nintendo versus sega or we can get handholds versus mobile like we can expand a number of different ways and we can you know expand into the larger pop culture you know depending on how, on how we go like it's a funny enough idea but we can go star wars versus star trek that would be funny that would be awesome and but like because i fucking love star wars but i kind of hate star trek so if you were to get me on that panel you wouldn't because i'd be hosting it presumably i'd be like oh, it'd be really hard for me to care about star trek so i think it's gonna be a fun little idea so if you are around if you're interested go check out my socials at hagen mc it's right there uh on twitter it's on uh instagram uh that's kind of all we use uh because facebook it's the thing um and jump in comment comments let me know share it around uh if you know any creators that you think would be fantastic for it that aren't myself or max um be sure to let me know uh because i think like I said, I, i've got two locked in at the moment but i did tell them i'm like look we're gonna see how we go don't know who the third's gonna be want to make it something fun so no, and that's the plan and max i don't i i know are you confident enough to get on a stage in front of people I mean, as long as I can keep my clothes on, sure. Well, I, I, it's not really part of the the, the, yeah, the no, request, I, but yeah, I've done, I've done, I've done stage work before. I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. And like, I, we, you know, I've, we've kind of instructed them. If someone, while, if someone breaks a leg on the day, I can, I'll happily step in. <laughs> well, that that's good. It's good. To, it's good to have an understudy. You know, uh, you are oh, more yeah. than senpai says you boys will I crush think, it on think, stage. Thank I you. I think the better question is, Max, are you going to be around all weekend this time? <laughs> yeah, because it does always fall around your like wedding anniversary. Um, I think this year it falls around someone else's wedding anniversary. <laughs> My wedding anniversary is at the end of the month. Someone we know has oh, good. at the start of the month. I'm actually pretty sure it was his wedding anniversary when we were there last year. It's, oh, it's Patch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I'm like, it was me. My, my, mine was in uh, March. I, I didn't want to say his name because I thought you were being deliberately vague by not saying who was on your... Oh, no, Paul's absolutely on the panel. Are you fucking kidding me? That's why I said I can't have all my friends. So, like... Who was on your team? I'm like, oh, is it, is it, are we keeping the names on Hush Well, like, no, like, it's the, the other ones I will keep on, on the Hush for Funsies. But, like, yeah, Padge is the other one. The other person knows. I reached out to them and, and um, it should be cool. But... Yeah, the third is where I'm looking for to have to, to have some have some fun. So, um, yeah, we're muting the chats because I like the idea, and like, yeah, and that's the idea. Like the it was super silly, um, and because they in the spirit of like camaraderie and community, um, which is what Pax is all about. Um, hence, why the spin of it's kind of fun because you know you like if anyone gets too mean and they get cold, you know it's like ah, there's a line. Like, you can't be like, you know, fuck Phil Spencer. He's a, you know, pedophile. Like, whoa, that's not, not neither true, substantiated, or, or appropriate. So, We're yeah. not talking about Gearbox offer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Randy Pitchford, thankfully, is not involved in either of them in a more dedicated space. Um, but, you know, there, it does bring to question why he had a USB drive full of squirt porn that he's left at a fucking restaurant. That's so insane. So insane. But, yeah, should be a bunch of fun keen as shit to do it oh, but the other thing max is the, uh the lsd is kicking in early this week what is the lsd oh oh is it going weird again uh, very nice. it's so very bizarre nice. that it as is soon as, you, as soon as you put your hand up my whole screen turns oh so my thing is my it must be a white balance thing right yeah. yeah um so as i was saying uh i lost my train of thought yeah so you and i we got to hang out today for the first time in like ages, and we did some dumb shit. Do we bury the lead and have some fun with it? Or we just kind of explain like that we hung out and did some shit, silly silliness. Should we wait for the response first and then bring it up? Yeah. Well, no. The, so the idea is like we wanted to shoot some stuff today because we have this plan, and it's kind of going to be this challenge between Max and I. Is the way it'll, I want to see it. It'll be an ongoing documentary <laughs> yeah and essentially it'll be like max and i are going to set ourselves a challenge whether it be a month or you know 30 days or 90 days max and is finally going to play that black backlog <laughs> yeah he's going to finally finish horizon uh, forbidden west uh or assassin's creed Valhalla. no um so yeah we have a plan thing about 90 days uh we shot some stuff today with the green screen in my lounge room it was fun as hell our kids had a blast they got to be silly if you go to my socials, I posted a picture of it today. Um, 
you, you don't know any more than that. You're not going to guess any more than that. You, you, can, infer, you can infer from... Yeah, you, I'd like to see what you guess from my socials. That'd be fun. Um, but yeah, no, it's a little challenge for you and I. And part of the reason I love this, Max, and this is going to sound like a brag and it absolutely isn't. Um, I'm very lucky in that I surround myself in the things that I am naturally good at. Like I'm naturally good at sitting in front of a camera and talking to people. I'm naturally good at knowing about games. I'm naturally good about reviewing games. Now, granted, I've worked on these things over time and I've gotten better, you know, same as commentary, a wrestling commentary and, and now ring announcing, like they can all be improved on, but the base of it, I, I naturally have that ability. So it's just easy for me to step into it, you know, and just kind of keep going where this this is going to be one of the first things that I will genuinely have to push myself through to be like, you got to do it. Cause you know, a big part of ADHD and, and my, and then myself is that like, I'm either fucking really good at something or it's unbearably painful for me to do, try to do. So that's why this is going to be fun for me. Because I want to see it through. I want to see how I go. And having us come in here and check in and go, this is what we're doing, uh, will make it a little bit extra fun. Because your, like, your idea behind this is not just for the fun of the challenge, but also connecting with your dad. Mm, a little bit, yeah. So how do you feel like, once again, in the alluding to no idea what this is, just to kind of add the intrigue, how are you feeling going to this potential challenge? Look, I hope it works out for the best, but I, I am in the same boat as you was. It's one of those things where I have, at the moment, a very limited downtime mm. where it's just me uh, and the ability to do something like this. <clears throat> um, but I'm hoping something comes out of it, even if it's just a basic knowledge mm. that I can then have, you know, one more thing on the list of things that I can, you know. Yeah exactly and kind of be like you know to take an interest in something that he's done for almost his entire life yeah. so yeah and i think it'd be kind of fun to like maybe at a party down the line or part of a conversation like one little fun fact like oh i learned how to do this because of this you know mm. it's like oh that's a weird way to do it I'm like yeah it is but it worked or <laughs> i tried and i didn't do it didn't do it at all but I think it could be uh, a good bit of fun. We're not playing that yet. Spoilers, this game's related. <gasps> Shock, what a twist. Max, what, are you, what have you been playing this week? Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with Destiny. I'm still playing Destiny. Destiny has taken over my life since the final shape has dropped. Mm. Uh, this week we saw the start of episode one, Echoes. Uh, so along with a new... Um, uh, what they used to refer to as a seasonal activity, they're now, like, I guess, episodal activities. <laughs> um, I dove into that. But the big thing that I've been focusing on this week in Destiny is their new exotic mission, uh, Dual Destiny. It is the first mission that can only be played in a two-man fire team. Can't be done solo, can't be done three-man. Have to, have to play a two-man. Uh, there was a lot of anger online from all the solo players going, I have to make a friend to play the game. Rah, rah, rah. Big, big old whinge. Mm. Uh, this exotic mission is the single greatest mission that Bungie have ever created in the 10 years of Destiny. This thing is fucking great. Uh, it's on a timer. So essentially, to boot up into this, into this mission, you have to have one person running a light class and one person running a darkness class mm -hmm. and it's that whole duality of working together um and having the opposites come together as one to to, to get through this uh it's a it's essentially a big old puzzle fest uh with a sprinkling of kill rooms uh, in between and some traversal so you essentially you do a puzzle you do a kill room sometimes the kill rooms are and the puzzles are conjoined and you you got to kill stuff while you're trying to work out the puzzle. Then you'll have a traversal room where you go from go from one puzzle to the next, um, and so on and so forth. So uh, the the first puzzle is fairly simple. One player essentially gets uh, once you kill a mini boss, you'll get a mode of light or mode of dark depending on which subclass you are playing at the time, uh, and you'll get some symbols shown on top of pedestals. There's 16 symbols in total. You have to 
talk to your teammate because they can't see those symbols on the pedestals and you have to be like I have this symbol and this symbol and they have to look around the room and shoot the corresponding symbols. Oh, it just suddenly become uh, keep talking, nobody explodes. But Destiny yeah, so, so So round one, it's two symbols, then three symbols, then four symbols. Yeah. And it alternates between who can see them and who has to shoot them. So you go back and forth. The next big puzzle is um, uh, essentially a clock face. So there's 12 nuts, essentially, oh. um, with lights beaming from the center to each individual number and you have to work out which ones are connected so for me i might have number one connected three five and nine but my team might my teammate might have 12 4 5 8 and 9 so you have to shoot the ones that both players have connected oh. and progress to the next one so this is interesting so like my the- like my sister is an example for the fucking life of her cannot read an analog clock We've taught, we've done everything within our power to teach her. She's like, I have fucking no idea. It's like she's got some sort of clock blindness. She's like, what's that? Like, I, I don't know. So like, if her, she was to play Destiny, one, that would be insane. And two, and then she gets this, she's like, Whoa. like that, that has my, uh, it's caught my attention. She's like, oh, I, so it's, how, it's how really do I do cool this? Obviously the big pressure is the mission itself is on a timer. And if you run out of time, it boots you back to orbit. You'll lose all progress. Have to start all over again fresh. Yeah. But it's, um, I haven't finished the mission yet. Mm. Uh, every time we've played it, we've gotten to the very end boss and we've run out of time. We're not doing it fast enough. Um, Have you worked out where the gaps in your run are from a time wastage perspective? Yeah, I blame my teammate. Well, yeah. Well, no. not, be, not, not being able to kill his ads fast enough. Uh. Because when you die, you drop all the motes of light or motes of darkness that you've received. Yeah. Therefore, all the all the abilities to either shoot the symbols or read the symbols disappears. And then you have to wait to get all four back. So you have to kill four more mini-bosses and then it, what? it's just a time-wasting thing. Now, but obviously, it has a recommended power level of, I think, 1995, so five below the cap. I'm currently 1992, but at the time, the the person I was doing it with was like 1960, so he was squishy as fuck. Well, the 90s were better than the 60s. That is objectively true. <laughs> um, so that's what I've been doing this week in Destiny. Is kind of just grinding that out, trying to get that done. But the other game that I've before been we jump into that, because one of the things that we we talked about when we asked for the review code, and I think something that would be fun, is that for yourself and our good friend Noodle to sit down and do an episode of More the Players. Like, the, one of the first shows that... It's actually, it would be the one of the first and only episodes of For the Players in its entirety that I am not involved in. And to me, that's really exciting. Yeah, so that's still happening. We The original plan was we were going to record something this weekend. But um, then they've added this little mode. And... Um, yeah, so... What ended up happening was there was a conf- there was conflicting schedules because we were going to essentially run the episode of More the Players whilst we play the campaign in its entirety in the background. Yeah, we so it'll kind of like hour a, a bit. Yeah, so yeah, we can knock it over in about an hour or two. Yeah, it's it's pretty quick now. Once we know now that we know what we're doing. Because yeah. um, I because yeah, that, like that's a cool idea. But I, I kind of love the idea of like the two of you just going. This is our ten years with Destiny. Mm. and talk about the highs the lows the things you love the things you didn't the moments where you thought it, you may lose it the th- the moments we like no this yeah. is fucking it you know when like because it is essentially a reminiscing of a 10 year uh love affair with, yeah. with yourself and the game and between you and noodle because you know oh but like <laughs> but yeah that, that's the that's the plan yeah. um and i might even uh record just the, the short 30 minute gameplay of this mission because this mission's really really cool yeah go ahead should be awesome so fun. um Be- but you mentioned yeah. you've been playing something else? Yeah, so thanks to uh, Five Star Games, uh, oh, yeah. I've been playing Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance. So this uh, released about a year ago on Switch. It was a Switch exclusive. Uh, this new version is essentially like a director's cut. It is now available everywhere. Seeing as the, um, these, the Shin Megami Tensei games are the precursor to the Persona, would you consider these like their version of the golden or ruby uh, was it ruby you know like the the fucking extra version of the base persona games royal 
Yes. Yeah, kind of. Okay. So, because obviously Persona is the probably the more popular. Oh, I mean, from more, a comparative, so whether it's like um, it's still the it's original not. game from X Man e, the so, earlier in yeah, the year. So, so essentially, it contains the it, it contains the whole base game, but they've added a bunch of quality of life updates. They've added uh, extra like demonic um, allies to the game and an entire new storyline. So, um, which is dictated by your choice at the very start of the game. So you can do. Um, uh what is it it's called the uh the new version is called the canon of vengeance which is the story i apparently picked i didn't realize at the time that that was the new story not the original (laughs) i'm I'm playing through that and the other one is the tale of creation so depending on depending on the choices at the very start of the game you'll you'll be put on one of those two paths and essentially your story will play out literally depending on the very first thing you pick in the game well that's good to know because like from a two different story but you know, like the last thing you want to do yeah. is have to play for 20 hours then it goes here is the divergence where it's yeah. like okay it's immediate you know what you're getting into so yeah. ha- have you played previous Shin Megami Tensei titles I need one of them do you know which one the the, the, the first like, you've seen vague like oh, one of them I've played the first one so mm-hmm. Persona was always has always been my series um, that's the one that I that kind of really I fell in love with here um the two games are very similar. They're, they're obviously both the same style of game. The big difference is that the Shin Megami Tensei games tend to be much darker in their stories. Like, Persona is pretty gnarly. Like, the first main mission is, like, he's a teacher that's inappropriate with some of the students. Persona is pretty gnarly, but um, this is, yeah... How, like, when they you talk- say it's darker, like, do you mean in thematically, in uh, character design, in overall... Uh, kind of overall mm. so with uh, keeping to the comparisons in persona when you have a party when you uh, when you have your party together it's essentially all the school kids that you're in your party with and they use their personas to use their special abilities yes. so they they channel their persona and they're like hey i can now use these abilities because the persona in me allows me to do so yep. in this game you yourself uh get infused with a demon oh but your allies are other demons. So similar to okay. Persona where you can talk to the demons and, and get them to your side where, and you get their mask to put on to use their Persona. Mm. In this, you literally have their embodiment in your party akin to like a Pokemon. Oh, well, so, that's kind of cool. So instead of seeing a human who would sometimes put on their mask and use the ability as as their as the personification of the demon, you're literally using the demon itself in your party to do battle with. Gnarly. Uh, there are still human companions who use their personas, for lack of a better term in this. Because I was going to say, like, how does it work from a team dynamic? Because one of the, you know, I shit on Persona all the time, but uh, 5, I adore 5, and 4 is pretty fun too. Yeah. Um, but one of the great parts about the game is the seeing the dynamics of yourself and the two other players uh two other uh, characters of your team do you get to replicate that with these demons yes it works as it works exactly the same so instead of so in persona you have social links yeah that's the word i wanted but where you where you where you where you grow your social links and then the stronger the bond between the two characters the stronger the character becomes in this uh, they literally have demon hangouts and you can go hang out with your fucking guys that you've captured <laughs> and have chats and you can give them gifts and they'll give you gifts and they'll, if they respect you more, they'll, they'll level up and they, they become stronger and learn new skills. It's, it's the exact, <laughs> it plays out almost the exact same, except instead of hanging out with your, your buddies from school, you're hanging out with the, the demons you've coerced into <laughs> fighting on yours that feels like extra manipulative and gross though it's like yo i know you've got you i've got you here to kill folk but like you want to hang out sometime like you just you were just a building <laughs> stockholm syndrome within these deep and that's that kind of yeah, rules pretty much so i'm about three <laughs> hours mute in the chat sounds like a normal day in japan it checks out yeah. from i've never been max you've been is it correct i've been yeah i just just constantly there's recruiting. demons everywhere yes there's demons everywhere <laughs> and school kids <laughs> I actually don't remember seeing a lot of school kids, but I had the, I had a very weird, um, cause obviously I've got, I've got tattoos everywhere yeah. and cause I, I love the cold weather. I, I never wore a jumper. I was always in a t-shirt. People would literally part and yeah. walk away from me because obviously there's that stigma of 
of tattoo folk, tattoos, but also because you're a larger gentleman too, and you know, like most people are pretty effing thin. Because like I know, I, I can't remember was it was it you that had a mate? Because they're like six seven or yeah. six eight and you know there's a i'm exaggerating but they're like quite tall uh and like they had a horrible time mm. yeah so yeah there were there were places that i could not go in because i had i had tattoos but like so, it's fu- the irony of it though is like because if i was to go there i've got the tattoo of a japanese company you're covered in final fantasy imagery a very well na- known and respected japanese product but i guess yes yeah, it's a blanket rule eh it's, it's the it was the hamburger it was the hamburger gave it away, gave it away. you know what it was it was the it was the uh, harry potter one Hate hey, J.K. I Rowling. I, I actually have a feeling that I didn't. No, have you didn't this have it then. I was just making a J.K. Yeah. Rowling joke. But. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm enjoying my time uh, with this so far. I um, again, I'm very early in. I, so what is the story from what you have played so far? Because you've highlighted that like the story's darker in tone, whatever. But like, where is it? Where's the oomph? So, at the start, um, similar to like all the Persona games, you essentially have a run in with a with a with a, a demonic entity. And I'm not far on <laughs> what well, to my understanding now, I'm either 20 years in the future from where I was and I've somehow time traveled into this post-apocalyptic demonic hellscape or something's gone amiss. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure because they're, they're, so far they've alluded it could be either. Um, and essentially uh, my, my current objective is to get to Tokyo Tower mm. uh, to try and find why i'm here and what i'm doing uh and that and uh my guide the demon the demon who has possessed me to give me my powers is basically like hey man just just to let you know there's a fucking huge demon there and you need to just chill out for a little bit and go gather some other dudes because you are not strong enough to go kill him so currently i'm farming and like just filling out my demon decks to (laughs) fuse all the demons together and make power make more powerful allies to uh to not have my ass handed to me like I did last time. I'm like, I can, I'm pretty good at these games. I can take this guy on. I'm like level 12. This will be fine. It's the first boss. How hard can it be? Guys, level 15 kicked my shit in in one turn. I'm like, okay, <laughs> very fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, turns out the answer is quite because, difficult. Because, because similar to Persona, the, 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 um, the combat works the same way. So if you hit an enemy with a weakness, mm. you get to have an extra turn. You add an extra turn to your, to your rotation. So this guy just hit me with every weakness known to mankind. Had like twelve turns in a row and just wrecked my day. I'm Ooh. like, cool, appreciated that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, asshole. Um, but some of the some of the the, the bonus features that they added was uh, more accessible gameplay. So I, I believe there isn't like a, an easy mode option. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've made some improvements on the battle system. Like I said, they they added new uh, demonic experiences. There's a greater field for exploration. So it's so far it's been really really fun um the game does this does this awesome thing i don't i don't recall them doing it in persona at least not to my knowledge but uh if a character (laughs) essentially doesn't matter and is just a background noise to fill in they don't have faces (laughs) yeah just just blank they just uh it's it's very disturbing you see there's a a bunch of blank faces walking around with glasses on there's got no eyes no facial like no facial features whatsoever and when you come across a character with facial features, like you're important because they've uh, put some effort into you. You've got some dialogue. <laughs> you mean something to me or the story. Yeah, so, so you seem like you should be of value. Yeah. So at the moment, yeah, I'm kind of just exploring, leveling up, doing all that, doing all that fun stuff to get out of what is essentially still the tutorial area for me. Okay. Nice fantastic but yeah so you're still quite happy with it and digging it like how yeah. like how long is the game though they don't be quite long though yeah they're normally quite long being big big old jrpg games but um yeah interesting well because in terms of of myself like i'm i'm sort of in that i don't know same space as well uh I have been spending a bit more time with the Elder Scrolls Online. I haven't played games as much this week as I thought I would. And I granted, because we recorded on 
Tuesday, the time between when we last recorded and when we are recording now, a bit minimal. Obviously, I haven't played much this weekend. I've had my boy, but I have played more in uh, the DLC for or the latest expansion, I should say, for the Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road. Um, it's a review code provided to us by the team over at Bethesda and Power Up here. Uh, so I'm still playing, obviously, the main character, the main character that I've created, which is Magnus Waffle Stomper. Uh, he. Uh, so I've kind of in the, in the first area, I've done a bit more, I'm level 10, I think at the moment. Um, and I'm kind of doing all the little extra stuff as well. So even though it's, there's the main story path and I'm trying to hit it the best I can, I did stop and made sure I learned all the basic crafting abilities like blacksmithing, woodworking, um, clothes, clothes making, uh, alchemy, enchanting and provisioning. I'm like, that's probably going to be helpful later. So I'm going to tinker with those for a little bit. Uh, and I'm just kind of, I kind of like exploring the world. I know it's a really dangerous mentality to have in a, in a, um, <clears throat> in a, in a, uh, an MMO max is the, I'm not going to leave this area until I've kind of done everything because I'm pretty sure there is never, you've done everything. I mean, you'll eventually run out of side quests to do. Yeah. But I, I get like, there is a finite number of things in each zone yeah. from memory. Yeah, there is. Like, on the, cause on the left-hand side of the screen, like there's like a bunch of checkboxes, like there's 10 shrines and this many sky shards and blah, 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 blah. Mm. And like, that's cool. And that's fun. And all right, cool, I might do that. But you know, the first, first area was like really easy. Cause it's kind of the tutorial Island. Um, not the tutorial Island in the, 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 you know, where you go and you do that. And then you kind of go to your first area and it's intentionally built small. I'm like, man, I'm ripping through this. I've done everything. Gosh, let's go. And the next area is like much larger. I'm like, oh. And because I was kindly provided um, the pass that gave me everything, so all the expansions I've ever had, is, you know, some missions are like, go talk to the person at the boat. And the boat's like, where do you want to go? And it's like everywhere. I'm like, well, that's overwhelming. Because the, I like, the last thing I want to do is then go somewhere and then go shit and go back to the place I wasn't and then shit and then I'm somewhere else again. Next thing you know, I'm lost in time and space. I'm like, where am I? How do I get back? Uh, Which is what happened to me when I booted it up. Yeah. Because I, I made a character to play with you. Um, I made an Argonian, so a lizard folk that I named Lizardo da Vinci. Good fucking great name. <laughs> and i'm like it's like do you want to play the tutorial again i'm like no i'm i'm good i don't, I don't oh yeah because if you tutorial. don't play the tutorial it just throws you in a world like you don't get to pick it put me in a room full of portals oh yeah that one went, yeah yeah i went which dlc do you want to play i'm like i don't know where is a good place to start <laughs> yeah well that because that's the problem well, that like, i had because like i had all like, of them very promptly closed the game well i have all of them but the new one yeah so i'm like i don't know Mm. that suffered from a little analysis paralysis and went mm, I can't make this decision well, um, well, let's decision have a look to, and, and see if we can organize you the gold road because I said I'm not I'm like that's I'm not that super far into it so the gold road you could catch up to me almost immediately and I think yeah. it would be fun to sort of do some of it in tandem um from a review standpoint so let me have a look into that I'll see uh if I if we can get you one or I'll, I'll you know, we'll organize some some dollar redos and get you just the base um but yeah it be kind of, it was kind of it's good so I've not played as much as I said. Once again, we recorded Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, so it's kind of like not a whole lot of time. But one one game that did come uh, to me in between that time, however, was uh, early access to a little game called Go Go Town. So I played this at PAX uh, last year. I think it was last year. Mm. Yeah, last year. Uh, so it's made by the team behind uh, called Prideful Sloth. They have made a bunch of awesome stuff. They did uh, Yonder, the Cloudcatcher Chronicles was the big one that most people kind of identify them for. So like Cloudcatcher, which was built around the idea of it is a fantasy RPG with no combat. And I dug it for that because it made it really fun and interesting. Go Go Town is their version of Animal Crossing, essentially, with a little sprinkle of Stardew Valley feels. And that you get dropped into this town and it's like, make this town thriving. And, you know, it's all about people coming to your town and seeing things and trying things. And, you know, that's how you accrue your money and your points that allow you to unlock more things. Excuse me. But then you also need to go and 
and mine to get supplies to build the things that you want. Go, you know, go to the forest and do some forestry. Go do some fishing and some farming or to supplement the growth of your farm. And of course, putting my hands on it last year, I went, this is a Betson game. And when I got the email for the early access, I was like, are you? Yes, yes, yes. And it's dope. It's dope. So it's still early access. It's a little couple, it's a couple of days away from fully releasing. Um, but like, I know it's early access for like creators and, and media folk. So you know, have a look out who, who's doing stuff. I know our good friend of the show, Jerd Man. I know he's playing it over on his streams, um, which is fantastic. I myself is enjoying it for myself, but like made a little version of me. I go around on my little skateboard that I found. I do some mining. I get hire some people. They do this. I build a town. And when everyone comes into your town, those that can stay and live there, they kind of set you these little challenges. It's like, well, give me a hundred bucks. Well, that was an easy one. Here's a hundred bucks. Or, hey, can I, you know, if does the town have bins? And it's like, get three bins and you can suddenly, the town will be welcomed by these people. Or give me six street lights or what, whatever it is, the merit, the, the numeric that they need. Um, so it's kind of fun. So you kind of build them in, come in, level up, which then allows you to expand your shops, expand your, your uh, resource management. Uh, and like, I'm digging it clearly because it's bets and a shit. Um, like it, it looks adorable. Is once again no combat, so it plays really fun. It's super chill and cozy. Um, a little feature that caught me off guard in a in a really good way. You can play the entire game with just your left hand, not because I'm gonna like touch myself while I play it or anything, but like you know, yeah, the mouse is there and the mouse mouse is helpful, but you could just theoretically do it all with your left hand. And then, you know, maybe, maybe you need to place somewhere with like place a building or whatever. But even then, I'm pretty sure you can do it with, with the, over this side as well. Um, yeah, because I was just sitting here like leaning back, just like build, building things. Going, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, cool. I'll go pick that, you know, attack that tree. Go pick the, those go nuts off that um, that bush. Get myself some some shrooms, make little shrimpy screwers. You know, it's cool. It's, I dig it. And like, if you want a fun little, like, I obviously, I don't know how far the game that you can go with the game because i myself uh have only put like you know, a couple of hours in at most so like and there's it's so far there always seems to be the next like step or tier to progress to and that yeah. uh, i'm digging that because like oh well oh, okay oh there's another one. Oh, there's another one so i do wonder like how many levels you can progress or like the map itself seems pretty large a lot of the areas are relatively inaccessible there's water which you can't travel over easily um, but you know, there's room to expand and there's cool little places where you might find some, some trinkets. So it does benefit you to explore. Uh, and it, yeah, it's just simple and fun and prideful sloth of, of, of really nailed it so far. And hopefully in the coming weeks, I, I will have, um, a final thoughts on it as I've ideally finished it. However, another game did come in my inbox yesterday. Haven't played it yet. I installed it. And, uh, if we go back to a game that Matt, obviously I'll, I'll lead to it. There was a game that we were playing on PC back in the day. I think it was when I first, uh, no, it was before I got my new PC and I, like, I threw myself into it like unreasonably. I'm like, this game oh, rules. And then there was a sequel. I'm like, there's a sequel. So let's go. And I, and the, the early access code came through yesterday. Uh, and it was like uh, last night. So once again, I was just uh, uh, dealing with my son. And I'm like, as I was just drifting off to sleep, bing, I'm like, oh, do I sneak out and go install it? Like, no, 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 he's, he's in the other game. I'll have with my boy, I'll have with my boy. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I'll have more to say about that soon, which is exciting. Um, very keen to see what I can do with that game. Uh, but let me see, let me just write down the notes on that one. Go, go town. Uh, Max, let's get in the section we're calling Inform the Players. We tell people what happened this week in PlayStation. Let's kick things off as we always do with some PlayStation news. There's not much this week. Uh, here are the games coming to Extra and Premium in tomorrow, I think. Uh, so tomorrow of time recording today if you're... No, sorry. Uh, no, tomorrow, it would, it would be Tuesday, Tuesday, so it's likely the 18th. Yeah. 
Uh, so we have coming to extra Monster Hunter Rise on PS4, PS5. Is that the one that was on Switch? Yes. Nice. Okay. Football Manager 24, PS5. Crusader Kings 3, PS5. Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game, number 6, PS5, PS4. After Us, PS5. Anno 1800, PS5. Police Simulator, Patrol Officers, PS5, oh, PS4. Man. This has been on my wish list for so long. I, I remember putting a key request in it on Keymail, and they never got back to me. I was like, hmm, that real sour about it. But I want to play it. Like, a good friends of the show over at the DualSense pod, uh, the the now closed DualSense pod, is it Dilly? Um, he loves it. He re- reviewed it for Gaming Nexus. Um, I want to play it so dumb. So goddamn bad. And I'm glad it's, like, coming this month. Brent. A Far Cry 4, PS4. Nice. Lego The Hobbit, PS4. And Lego The Incredibles, PS4. Do you reckon, because you said you're trying to get Hadley to play games that aren't poor patrol. Hadley's your daughter. Yeah, your, we, his, we, his daughter, by the way. Um, we, we, we tried. Lego the Incredibles get it, get there? Maybe. we. I bought Lego Harry Potter, the collection. One, he's one through seven. She's like, it's too scary, Dad. Like, so maybe we'll play The Hobbit. Yeah, we have... Oh, no. Uh, there are some big things in The Hobbit. Um, and next up are your premium titles coming to uh, the service. We have Kayak VR, Mirage. So th- I remember Maragi. seeing this one. Yeah, Miragi. Um, Miragi. And it was on as like, it looked beautiful because it's relatively simply a game, simple game, right? You're in a kayak and you have the kayaky things and it's all about scenic environments. I think there's one where you can like, you know, kayak under Aurora Borealis at this time of the year. Rowing simulator. You know. What's that? It is rowing, rowing simulator. simulator. So that's probably why it tickles my fancy, but... I do like that we're getting little sprinkles of VR titles now that they've officially decided to say fuck PSVR 2. It's coming to, you get your PC dongle. We don't care anymore. We don't support it. Here's fucking games again. They did it when PSVR was slowly dying. They're like, yeah, here's free games as part of PS Plus. Have fun. Uh, next up, we have Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. That might be PSP. too scary for, for Hadley. There's a lot in there, like Chewbacca's and stuff. A Ghost Hunter, PS2. And Daxter for PSP. Now I talk some smack throughout there. Is there anything that gets you tick- that tickled in the in the front area? Um, Crusader Kings Three is great. Mm. Uh, it's a nice alternative from to like Civilization. It's kind of one of those political intrigue games where you essentially just rule the country and then keep having offspring that will rule the country after you, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's cool that it's coming across. Um, it's been on games pass for the longest time so it's nice to see it come over here as well mm-hmm. um other than that Far Cry 4 is great <laughs> yeah it's one of the ones I've, that i've spent the least amount of time with like i played a lot of three played a good i uh almost and finished primal, five primal is my least played actually no i have i've never played primal and i do have it it's it's josh's copy i borrowed it like many years ago uh and i forgot and it's still on my shelf but yeah i've never played primal i guess it's probably the other one but uh max we're talking about like playing games with your children uh and all that sort of nonsense so in the firmware and updates section which is quite reasonable and often uh child account a child account on your PlayStation can now link and add third-party services and apps to their account for the PlayStation Network to enjoy benefits and features that enhance their gameplay experience. Younger players that, that use child accounts on PS5 can link accounts to features like Discord voice chat, music streaming services like Apple Music and Spotify, or broadcasting and sharing gameplay via YouTube and Twitch. I believe this also allows for like Netflix and Stan and, and other um, uh, subscription apps. Uh, new parental controls are available for both parents and guardians, and these controls notify and allow them to manage their children, child's account with third-party services and apps. Uh, availability may vary depending on age, uh, parental, control, parental control settings, and country and region. Uh, so you can now... Sl- uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh uh, and we've also updated, it's also updated the device software for the Pulse Elite headset, uh, Pulse Explore earbuds, and the PlayStation Link USB adapter. 
Um, so the, play, the PlayStation Link connection stability has been improved. They've also fixed the issue with the Pulse Elite wireless headset that caused the power to turn off ah, when the audio cable is connected to the, the audio input jack. That's weird. Uh, also on the Pulse Elite wireless headset, the status indicator that turns on after establishing PlayStation Link connection is now less bright because it's like a tear. It's just blasting in the side of your face. Um, I remember there was the uh, Razer... Th uh, what was the controller? Um... The Raiju? The Raiju. And like it had a little light under, like the light bar under the touchpad. But unlike the PlayStation controller, it was like not too gnarly. This, you, I had to put fucking tape over it. Because if you thought about playing it in the night, it was like the sun flares just directly in your lower eye hole. It was gnarly and really poo. But I'm, you know, I don't use that controller in a while. Um, also, of course, of course improved system software performance and stability and they've also improved the messages and usability on some screens uh max we haven't put it as a bigger news story this is really not a really big news so story therefore i will <laughs> i will back end it here okay you can now start or join a discord voice chat directly from your PS5. You can open Game Base in the Control Center and select the Discord tab to access your servers and direct calls. Max, before we jump into the Discord stuff, uh, do you use a child account with your kid? No, she just plays online. Yeah, yeah. So, like, my son has to, my old PS4 fair, at his place. I mean, to be fair, she also doesn't play a lot of PlayStation games. She's playing Paw Patrol on my PC. Oh, okay, yeah. So, I don't really use child accounts is not yeah it's not necessary so thankfully between myself and and his mum we keep an eye on what he plays my son and and so he he also knows that there are some games that are for him and some games that are not so he's very lucky in the the years of which we've been doing this and games coverage in general we have a backlist of so many games yeah. so he can play almost anything he wants if he asks for it and it's a, and it's around so he doesn't tend to push his luck because he knows that if he asks, it'll probably be available. Mm. So he's not be like, can I play Resident Evil? I'm like, no. You know, he's like, what about this game? I'm like, yeah, I, got that, I have that game. Here you go. Oh, yeah, I have that one. Here, check this one out. You know, so it's, it's not... I find that, like, if it was super restrictive, he'd be more inclined to, like, sneak behind and, like, break the rules. But he's like, oh, well, Dad said that's not for me, but I have these games instead. Which yeah. is nice. It's like, it's a good... That's until he, like, now, when he's, you know, older, he might just be a right prick about it. But at the moment, he's thankfully respectful enough to be like, no, what Dad said goes. Mm. But Dad the Discord... Said no to, Dad said no to Resident Evil, but killing some strippers in GTA. <laughs> oh, actually, no, there is no GTA. We have we do have an OG too. Remember, we have an no Fortnite rule too. Or Roblox. No, bro. Roblox in my house is, yeah. is a big one. I, yeah. My daughter watches a lot of YouTube videos with Roblox. She's like, can't play. I'm like, no. Yeah, same as my son. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, and he very quickly went, oh, okay. Because I was like, well, do you want to play Hello Neighbor? Do you want to play uh, Goose Game? Do you want to play God? If I can play God of War for all I care. God of War is lovely. It's incredible. Because like he wanted to play it the other day just because he knows I love it so much. So he might not get it, but for him, he can go, hey, daddy, I've been playing God of War. And he gets all full of himself and proud. You know, oh, it's awesome. Because you'll ask me, be like, oh, I'm stuck. What do I do? I'm like, I don't. I haven't played the game since 2018. Like, you play, you be playing Ragnarok. I can talk about Ragnarok because uh, that's semi recent. But yeah, but Discord. I've just grown so used to just because because obviously where I play my PlayStation. Yeah. Um. For obviously, I'm looking at this screen here, which is uh, my screens here and here are for PC. My screen just here is for the PlayStation. So clicking to do my discord over here is really not that big of a deal mm. i've kind of gotten used to it i so, was outraged to begin with <clears throat> so have you you have tr have you and your team of individuals uh the group of sweats um have you all transitioned to discord no it depends on what we're playing i was gonna say because like that chat's been pretty quiet for a while i know people have no, i was no curious on like would you would you make the, the transition none us, now none of us really play games together anymore <gasps> so like obviously zill and i play play diablo together we use discord <clears throat> Because I'm playing, I'm playing on PC, but he's playing on PlayStation. So we use Discord chat, so we can both chat with each other. Mm -hmm. um, the the three boys are playing Sea of Thieves, so they play in a PlayStation chat because they're all playing on PlayStation. If I join them, 
I do the courteous thing and join the PlayStation chat and just run um, an aux cable from my PC to my headset so mm-hmm. I can get PC sound, but audio from the PlayStation, I just join the chat. Uh, very rarely do we kind of use both. Because it's interesting, because it, it, out of all the things in all the years that you and I have done this show together, the one that kind of annoyed you the most was this not being your thing. Yeah, I mean, well, the whole thing was, like, how hard is it to... Like, how hard was it to do it? Because the, 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 the other issue was Xbox could do it to begin with, yet PlayStation paid a bunch of money to Discord to help them develop stuff for PlayStation. Mm. And they're like, you, know, you gotta you gotta Nintendo it up and use a phone app, buddy. So like, why? Just integrate it properly to begin with. But, I mean it wasn't that bad. I got over it pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. And now it's like, oh, oh cool. The, the what voice, they should have done at voice launch. quality is far superior <laughs> in the Discord chat than it is on PlayStation chat. But uh um, but I'm glad that it's finally here. That's good. That's good. Now, for yourself, obviously we know that you are quite a large uh, uh, Final Fantasy f- fan. One of the ones that got the rounds a lot. I remember this being. I think it was part of the the Nvidia leaks back in the it day. Was part of the it was part of the uh, Nvidia leak. And I know that didn't now... narrow it down. Actually, it'd be really fun going to check out that Nvidia leak now and seeing how much of it, it is it, like good. It has now resurfaced in the recent Epic Game Store leak. Oh, and we're talking much about like, Final Fantasy Nine. Yeah, Remake. much like much like the Steam database, there apparently is an Epic database, Ooh, and a whole epic. bunch of stuff came out from it. So we've been hearing about the Final Fantasy Nine remake for quite some time. We've all been wondering, is it actually going to happen? It's been getting harder and harder to ignore all the evidence with the latest leak all but confirming the project exists in some capacity. In the recent launch of Epic Database, a website that tracks the inner workings of the Epic Game Store, similar to Steam Database, has unleashed a tidal wave of fresh leaks. Buried within a long list of registered software is something called Momo, a code name for the Final Fantasy IX remake. How do we know? While it's registered under Square Enix, it's tied to a whole bunch of additional listings, such as the Thieves' Knives pre-order DLC, and more importantly, the Tetra Master Starter Pack DLC, Tetra Master being the card minigame from Final Fantasy IX. It is important to note that many of these epic listings date back to 2023, and so they may no, no longer be accurate to the eventual release. Still, it feels like we're just waiting for Square Enix to make an official announcement at this point. Clearly, there's something happening, going by the sheer number of software registrations, it's entirely possible that a reveal is coming sooner than we think. Although according to Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, who popped up on the Gaming Leaks and Rumors subreddit to inspire hope, uh, he just left uh, one thing. He said, hi, the Final Fantasy Tactics remaster is real and happening. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Schreier. So I just pulled, I couldn't remember which one Final Fantasy IX was. So I did pull up an image and it's the dude with the blue jacket and the brown wizard's hat. Is, yeah, he, in, the, is he in many of them or is he just that one? He is just in that Because I remember him. Everyone else I have no effing idea what's going on. He's kind of the stereotypical black mage sprite from every other game though. Yeah, okay. That's probably where. Like, I think that's the, that's the iconic black mage sprite brought into a 3D space. Yeah, okay. His name is Vivi or or, 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 or yeah. here. Dumb name. Yeah. But uh, for yourself, Max, because we know a good friend of the show, Paul James, uh, big fan of Final Fantasy yeah. IX, called yeah. it the best one yet. Final Fantasy IX is not my favorite. It is up there, but it's not my favorite. Do you think out of all of the Final Fantasies that have ever existed, um, this is the one that's best to be the second remake? Um, I kind of, I, I thought eight was fun. Like I remember playing the demo for eight, and I quite liked this eight imagery. Was, eight, eight was fun, but was very flawed in its junctioning system, and very flawed in the fact that it disincentivized you from farming and yeah. leveling up. Because isn't it all, the world scaled with you or something? The world scales with you. So if you get to level a hundred, which is a level cap, the bosses become almost unkillable. Oh, because, because they yeah. have such high HP limits because they've leveled up with you. So you're incentivized to only do 
um, mandatory battles that you can't escape from because it's just easier to get through the game when the end game boss is level 20 when you're level 20 mm. that's bizarre that's so weird <laughs> um look not nine is popular it's it's not my so favorite what's nine's I, gimmick if eight was that what's nine's uh nine kind of went back to the job system where to learn skills you had to use different equipment and master the master the skill before you could swap your equipment out and use the next piece of gear to get the next better next better thing which is fine but um yeah it wasn't for me i like i would love to see Final Fantasy X redone. I would love to see them. Uh, well, ten got ported to PS4, so you could technically still yeah. play it. So from a does, from a need for a remake, not so much. Where well, nine is a PS1 uh, title, but, but they also got all those fancy remasters on on PS4. They got the the upgraded version with the inbuilt cheat where you could have no encounters. But yeah, going from like, like the. Like fidelity of those remasters to a re like the remake space yeah not as much needed as say like nine or eight or i six. would i would prefer to see final fantasy six redone over over nine but What's that's six's just, gimmick? um six had the magitech armor one arguably the best villain of any final fantasy series uh, um, oh interesting i know people have lots of hard-ons for what's his face big sword <laughs> big sword bloke from seven for us yeah that guy um so yeah big but... sword bloke what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> one of the most iconic final fantasy characters ever I'm like oh no the dude with the sword which also didn't narrow it down by the way <laughs> so yeah i mean it's cool that it is happening i mean try is a pretty re like reliable source of information um so yeah yeah oh well well let's get into was it sorry no patch will be happy. Oh, absolutely. So let's get into them uh, them quick bits. Uh, Astrobot has uh, over 150 PlayStation character cameos. I'm looking I forward. I didn't even realize it was 150 PlayStation characters. Oh, I guess that's that's the thing I'm curious about. Like, I want to know, like, is there a quiz? Like, I want to see how I go. I reckon I could get, like, 110 how many of them are double ups? Are we getting That's... old Kratos, new Kratos? Oh, good catch. Are we, get, are we getting? Are we getting like? We're getting Thor. Are we getting a? Are we getting like a fat Astrobot to look like Thor from Ragnarok? That would be beautiful. It's a little rotund we, dude. We get like Crash Bandicoot, fake Crash. Speaking of, yeah, Fat <laughs> Princess. Fat Princess was in uh, Rescue Mission, so it's very possible. Yeah. How many do you could get out of the 150? How many do you reckon you could guess? I don't know. We'll have to see, I guess. Well, no, I want to lay, I want to lay a guess now because I, I, I'm going to say 110 and I assure you when the time comes, I'm going to get like fucking 60. I, I, I think I could probably get about half. Mm. Yeah. It'd be I'd a fun little game because I reckon, because I can assure you that someone like Push Square would have taken a shot of every one 150 and be like that make a quiz i think that'd be a ton of fun and if they don't either well, i'm not gonna do it. i'm too lazy but like maybe you know hey patch play it too you know like someone do it and make the first quiz because that would be super fun uh astrobot will also be getting free post launch dlc more characters bah, bah, bah. the test gets harder uh, Elden Ring hits 25 million collective sales ahead of its Erd Trees revival, which is this week. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you excited? Mm -hmm. Nice. Only 35% of PlayStation Elden Ring players w have progressed far enough in the, in the game to start the DLC. Now, as you mentioned, you do need to, in a previous week, you have to go past which boss? It's Mog. How deep in the game is this? like the first third okay well i as someone that got didn't it's get past the first, the first like fucking horse guy who just kicked my dick in unreasonably and i quit no chance no chance at all and finally this one this news made my son very very happy uh marvel spooderman 2 will be getting a free update with eight new suits on tuesday the 18th of june uh, a couple of them are old suits from uh, final fantasy apparently says my brain <laughs> spider-man one and a couple of new ones sprinkled in there as well 
All right, coming soon. On the 18th of June, we have Hashtag Blood <laughs> coming to PS4. Is that its name? Hashtag Blood. B-L-U-D. Yeah. That name is Ballbags. Uh, still Wakes the Deep coming oh. to PS5. On the 19th of June, we have Glyphs of Gitzan coming to PS5, PS4. On the 20th of June, we have Ever After Falls, PS5, PS4. Mushoku Tensai Jobless Reincarnation Quest of Memories, PS5, PS4. That is one of the most Japanese names I've ever heard. And most and of it was Ru- coherent, which is also bizarre. And Rusted Moss coming to PS5. Uh, that is the Mad Max-inspired prequel. Uh, very Furiosa uh, of, uh, of Moss from the VR games. Uh, spoilers, uh, it's also not any of those things. On the 21st of June, we have Elden Ring Shadows of the Erd Tree and Times and Galaxy. Yeah, I know what yours is. Yeah. It's Mishoku Tensei Job. <laughs> 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 uh, so you, you, you brought up um, Furiosa. Oh, Max I did. Suck. Uh, I am following a what uh, I listen to a, a movie review podcast called um, um, the Filmcast. Yep, oh, great name. I'm I'm yep. very perplexed on why it took you so long to remember that. Uh, and they do a thing every year called the Summer Movie Wager, where they uh, they get a coho they get the three co-hosts, they get an extra person in, and they guess which are going to be the top ten best-selling mm. box office movies domestic to the US. So they have a running website on what the, the numbers are currently, and I'm really upset that Bad Boys Ride or Die is doing significantly better than Furiosa. <laughs> yep. Well, because one of those things where the... the ba- like this, well, I was having a discussion, funny enough, in the car when we are driving around today with, with my partner, um, we are discussing it around how the box office experience, the movie experience, is no longer a thing right so there's well, this because, uh, there's unreasonable expe- yeah Sorry, the, no, the unreasonable expectation of what it should be delivering and then everyone goes oh it'll be out and streaming in three weeks anyway so fuck who cares so unless it's something like yeah. barbie and hoppenheimer you know we get barbenheimer or like some really good reason to go to the cinema but because they've been making more generic and bland big fucking blockbusters bless you know like i don't know why am i going to say that and we're like something like furiosa which is you know looks to be objectively a really good film i love fury road uh what but what's everyone's all like and once again off the backlash of marvel and um ghostbusters and star wars and all this quote unquote woke shit in 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 movies everyone was like what it's mad max there's no mad max like mad spoilers if any of you saw fucking mad max fury road mad max was not the main character in that movie it was well, Furiosa aware, the whole time. And they're aware that this is a prequel to Fury Road, right? Yeah. Oh my God, they're all idiots. So, um, I, so I that's, pro- that's why big, I didn't the get it. As you pointed out, is that the fact that you, we used to have to wait three to six months to watch these bastards Minimum. movies. Now it's two to three weeks. Yeah. I'm with I'm with the mullet show. I definitely want to see Deadpool Wolverine. At the, at the well, that I would because only because I want that collective the- laugh out loud experience. I just, I just want a popcorn bucket where I can face fuck Wolverine. Oh, I'm gonna face fuck Wolverine. <laughs> so good. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get like knuckle deep, hand, wrist deep in that mouth. I'm hoping the cinemas near us have it. By the way, they should. I want a Hugh Jack light. You know what I mean? Like I'm Hugh Jack off. That would have been better. Damn it. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this week. Uh, we do appreciate everyone that does take the time to check out this show. Uh, it, you know, you, uh, time is precious, and for some reason, you spend it with us. Oh, why, Max? Why not? What else have you got to do on a Sunday night? It's a very good point. Or whatever time you listen to us, like you know, if you're at work or you're driving uh, or you're at the gym or you're pooping or you're cooking dinner. Uh, or other various uh, tasks that we do in our world, in, in our lives that are supported by podcasts. For me, it's pretty much everything. I listen to podcasts all the time. It's, it's my It makes me so calm and chill, and like it just really puts me at ease. It's like stimming for my ear holes. It's brilliant. <laughs> ear hole stimming. <laughs> uh. it, it, it was like when I said it, I was like, ugh. And then you said it, I'm like, ugh, someone else said it. That's real fucked up. Ugh. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah. All right, everybody. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. 
If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, you can come and check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and X. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopculturist. We can watch us record this show live. We can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you're listening to us on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you can watch us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash popcultures, as well as our merchandise store, popcultures.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts, other assorted shit with our logos on it. But until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. Nice. For the players. Thank you.